Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and today we'll take a look at how to migrate your AI builder solutions. And this video is part of my overall AI builder video series, this one being video number seven. And this came as a request when I made a post on LinkedIn and that really helped me solidify the creation of this video. So thank you for all your responses. All right, so AI builder solutions is similar to the overall solutions concept. However, when it comes to AI builder, two items definitely stick out and I'll be emphasizing on those in this video. So it's very, very important that you watch this whole thing because you could build the most beautiful AI builder feature. However, it all comes to wane when you cannot migrate that over to your production environment. So stick around. But first, here's my intro video. So when it comes to migration of solutions across environments or even across tenants, you have to make sure that the environments have the same functionality. So for example, if a source environment has certain security group and even some features turned on, you have to make sure that the destination has the same thing. Now, when it comes to the AI builder, there is one additional feature that you have to take a look at, and that is the assignment of the credits. So if you remember, the second video that I released, it was about administration. And over there, I emphasize the assignment of the credits. So when it comes to the migration over here, you have to make sure that the destination environment has at least the same number of environments as the source. And keep in mind, the destination might be production, so you will definitely need more credits over there. But for minimum, make sure that the destination environment has at least the same number of credits as the source. So at least let me walk you through the credit assignments that I have in my tenant for this video. So here I am in my power plant from Admin Center, also known as PPAC. And if I go down over here into resources, we take a look at capacity. And if I scroll down, these are the number of credits that I have. Now I'm going to go to add-ons. And over here, you can see the environments that are listed with the actual AI credits assigned. So AI builder stuff is the environment which I even use a lot of my videos as examples, but that is my source environment. Now I'm going to go ahead and move that over to my destination environment, which is managed solutions. So I made sure that when it came to these AI builder credits, the two of them had at least the same number. Now managed solution is the destination. And if this is your production one, that this needs to definitely have more credits, but, but minimum requirement, let them match. And I've already walked you through this on the administration video. What I did over there was I click on the pencil and I went ahead and assigned the credits. It's literally as simple as that. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna show you is the creation of the solutions. Now, the concept of solutions should not be new to you because right now, as you understand, everything is solutions-based. So it's a good idea to even have solutions for your AI builder when it comes to the creation of the models, uh, apps, flows, everything, put it inside a solution. Now, even in this scenario, it's a good practice to actually even create your solutions broken down into different things. And that is what I want to show you. So I'm going to come over here now into my source environment, which is the AI builder stuff. <clears throat> and over here, I have a custom AI model, which is of type unmanaged. And when we go over here, you can see there's a few things. Um, there is two AI models that I have. Um, I have two different types of apps. Um, I have a cloud flow and I have a table. So for my demo sake, I went and consolidated everything into one solution. However, for your production type of environments, you can consider breaking these down to two, maybe even three to four different solutions. And I'll give you some ideas. So anything that has to do with the apps, you can break that down into its own solutions as well. Same thing for the flows, break that down into another solution. It's also a good idea for connections or connection references and tables to be put into its own separate solution. And as an addition for our AI scenario, you can go and put your AI models also in a completely separate solution. So all said and done, you could actually have four different solutions in this scenario over here. And again, as a recap, one could be only for apps, Another one could be for flows. Third one could be for your connection, connection references and tables. And then the fourth one could be for the AI models. And the main reason to do this is so that when you're making changes, it doesn't all have to happen in one solution. 
Example, you went ahead and enhanced your AI models and now you've got to go ahead and train that all over again. Well, in that case, only the AI model solution gets affected and then you don't have to touch the apps one or the flows one, even the tables one. So it really helps to break it down. In that case, your migration across becomes easier and you basically don't hinder with other things. Now, when the actual migration comes, that all hasn't changed. So for example, if I go back to my solutions, this is the one, custom AI models. So there's two ways you can go and do it. You can manually do the export as a zipped file and then import it into your destination, or you could use Power Platform Pipelines. Pipelines is just another automatic, almost a one-click way to go and do the migration. Pipelines works for this scenario as well. So for the simplicity, all I'll do is I'll go ahead and select this one, and then I'm gonna go and do an export solution. And over here, I'll just make sure all the publishing is good. And then I'll go and click on next. It is going ahead and checking to make sure that there are no missing components. This usually can take a few minutes. We just have to make sure it all is done. Uh, it gives me a list of all the dependencies. Everything looks good on my side. So I'll click on next and now I will do the export. This is also where you have to make a decision what the destination environment is going to be. Say for example, this is a production type of scenario where you're saying, hey, no, in the testing also, I'm gonna leave it as managed so that testers don't make any changes. That's actually a great idea. Go ahead and leave this as managed and then do the exporting. All it will do is basically give you the zipped file that you can go ahead and download and that I'll show you how to import that next. Once the export is successful and when you go ahead and download it, this is what you will get. See, the name is very similar to the display name, and then you also go and get some version number. It will be a zipped file, so keep that as is. You do not need to unzip it. Now, I will go into the destination environment, and this also works if it's a whole separate tenant. Go to that tenant, go to that environment, and you can go ahead and import that solution. So right over here, there is this import solution. I'm gonna go and click on it. I'm gonna go click on browse, and we're gonna go and grab this one right over here. I'll go and click on open, and now I'll click on next. So now it's processing the actual file we've imported. It'll go ahead and give me all the information, the metadata, everything is good. Advanced settings, this checkbox to enable plugin steps and flows, including the solution. By default, it is checked. I'll leave it as is, and now I'll go and click on next. It is going ahead and checking all the connections. It's saying that, hey, in your destination environment, do you have all these connections? It identified all the connections, but over here, it is basically just saying, hey, one of the connections is not correct. Um, so I'll just go and click on this invalid one. Uh, it is going and making sure that the connection is there. And now I've got green checks all the way. Everything looks good. So I'll just go and click on import. And now it is initiating the import. And over here on the top left, you see it says currently importing solution custom AI models. So at this point, all you can do is basically wait. Uh, you don't even need to have the window open over here. It will just do its magic in the back end and you just have to wait. Once it is done, you will actually see that name show up over here. Very similar. You see custom AI models, it's just there in the, you see custom AI models, which is in the source environment. When you come into the destination, you will see that over here. So for now, we just wait until the importing is completed. Yay, I got a green check over here saying solution name custom AI models, imported successfully, and I can go and click on this link to view the checker results. Now I get excited because not all real world scenarios are this perfect. Sometimes you can get a yellow one, sometimes you get an orange one and there'll be a big text over there. Um, just go through that step by step, do some troubleshooting, nine out of 10 times, it is just that the destination environment does not have all the features enabled, permissions are not all there. It's stuff like that which you have to go through the troubleshooting. So in our case, the import is successful, and like I said, right over here, even in the destination environment, we are seeing the custom AI models, and that is very similar to the source one. Also, when I go and click on it, we should see all of these objects which are in. So once it gets loading, you will see we've got two models, we've got the two apps, cloud flows, references, connection references, and the tables. They all came through. So as a quick test, let's open up this Canvas app called Invoice Processing. And I've actually done a whole video on that as well, but I just wanna do a quick test right now. So I'll go and select that, and I'll go and click on Play. The Canvas app will open up, and we can just do a test. So far, no errors. Remember, all the connections are already set up, so everything looks good. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and give it an invoice. Come over here. Um, right on this document processing, there are these invoices. I'll go and give the test one. 
open just to, to make sure everything is working as it was because we just did a fresh migration and this is testing in so many ways even all the connections to our ai builder is that working successfully and all in all it actually did really well uh, and again if you're interested i've done a whole video on this i put the link down in the description below so this is neat all right the migration was successful all right so now let me give you a little bit of bad news and that is the model what happens is when you do the migration, you simply cannot edit this model. And I'll prove that to you. Let me go over here back into our solutions. This is the model of like, solutions. Let's go into the model. This one right here, invoice processing one. I'm gonna go and click on it. It takes us into the model place. Again, this is in the new environment. And eh, right on the top, it says, models imported from other environments cannot be trained, edited, or deleted. And if you go and click on that learn more in the next tab right over here it says importing status some of the limitations it says you can't create and train a new version of an imported document processing object detection or entity extraction model these were actually the demos that i did in my previous videos so it's very important that you know this purely from a unmanaged standpoint because Say if you did this migration to your production environment, then this is fine because in production, you do not edit stuff anyway. So this is by no means a showstopper. You can continue using this for your real world scenario. However, just keep in mind is that if you're moving this from one test environment to another test environment, then the destination environment, you cannot go ahead and make changes to it. You literally have to rebuild the model all over again. That is the only one limitation that is currently available. There's also one point over here that I want to call up. It says, if you're using a model within an app or a Power Automate flow, uh, you need to explicitly add the app and the model to the solution. The model isn't considered as an app or a flow dependency. What's basically it is saying is that if you want to go ahead and have that app and the flow also moved, then you need to move those independently. Just because you move that model doesn't mean that the app and the flow will move. And you and I already took care of that because why? We are very solutions based. We actually build a solution and over there we went ahead and imported everything else. In that case, this call out doesn't affect us because we are taking care of it by ourselves. So keep that in mind and take into consideration the idea that I shared that instead of just building one solution, you can consider breaking it down into multiple solutions. But all in all, it works really well because for example, if I come over here into my Power Automate and say if I go into my more, uh, going to discover all and if you go and take a look at our AI builder activity uh, right over here there you go we actually just see one that was ran the image documenting processing it shows that it went and consumed the AI credits the fact that it is already going ahead and giving us this activity means that the migration was successful and the AI builder model is also successfully running so I'm going to close by emphasizing that I deliberately kept this video so late into the series that way I have enough AI models, I have some apps, flows, and even some tables to make it part of an entire solution and then do a successful migration. That way this is as close to the real world scenario as possible. And also run into those issues where, hey, the model simply cannot be trained into the destination environment and do the prerequisite work such that there is enough AI credits assigned to the destination environment. Hopefully this video was useful to you and as always, keep using AI Builder. Hey, if you have a few seconds, can you click on that like button and even consider subscribing it? Because it's just two easy clicks for you, but boy, it makes a big difference for me. Also, if you don't mind, can you put in a comment below? Because that really boosts this video up to reach a higher audience. And once again, thank you for watching this video.